Hey there, my name is Daniel and I'm with Classic Promenade and behind me here is a 1984 Porsche 928S. Uh, today we're going to be going over the exterior, the interior, uh, as well as going for a test drive. So to get started, I'm going to go over the paint uh, and specifically focus on uh, a lot of the, the imperfections that I've been able to find uh, on the exterior. So let's start with that. Uh, so as we mentioned in the description, the first important thing to uh, take note is that this car, um, this is the original color of this Porsche, but most of the paintwork has either been resprayed or touched up. Um, overall, the, the depth, the shine, the luster on this paint is really good, uh, particularly in direct sunlight. Swirl marks, uh, scratches, nicks, stuff like that are really not very evident. Um, as well as any signs of the respray or, or you know places where repainting had taken place. I've got with me a paint meter here and we're gonna go over a couple of the different sections just to show you what the paint looks like. Starting here on the roof. So as you can see from the paint meter readings, overall, pretty much all parts of the car, all the different body panels, uh, paint's on there pretty thick, usually pretty clear indication that there has been a respray or a repaint. Um, but like we said, uh, overall condition and presentation is very strong. That said, there are a number of imperfections on the paint, which I'll show you now. First thing you'll see is there are several little paint chips like that. You can find them on the front bumper well as into the hood. They're all very small and you do have to get quite close to see them, uh, but they are present as well as you can see some signs of swirl marks or very little scratches in the paint like right there. This front lip spoiler also has this plastic bit. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but there are some scratch marks there, probably where it may have bumped into a, a curb at a slow speed or scraped on a driveway. This here is right on the passenger side, uh, top of the wheel well, close to where it meets the door. This section here over the gas cap, again, might be a little bit hard to see in the video here, but there's a scratch that runs along here. It's very faint uh, and it's maybe, maybe eight or nine inches long, but again, very, very difficult to see. Here where the rear bumper connects to the body, there's this mark. And then uh, moving over to the handle, there's these three scratches in the trim piece. And uh, there are some of the, I don't know if those are fingernail scratches, but they're present lightly, but they are present on uh, both the door handles as well. This here is a good example of some of the swirl marks that you can see in, in certain lights. Um, you know, it's contrasted nicely with there's really good metallic flaking in the paint. And so you do have to get very close to the car and like right here next to the light and you can see it. So if you're outside on a super sunny day and you get up close to this car, you will notice these imperfections. Um, but again, even, even on a bright day at a normal distance away from the car, it, it really does present nicely. Moving on to the interior, um, really interesting fact about this car. Uh, we've had a leather specialist come and look at it and um, he has informed us that this is in fact the original leather on the car uh, and with the exception of us having redone the, uh, rewrapped the steering wheel and of course the aftermarket stereo, uh, this car is completely stock and original on the inside. And honestly, first impressions of this interior are really, really good. When you start looking at some of the, you know, the pieces more closely, you will notice some, some imperfections. I did see this screw hole here holding down this. Um, that's, you know, that's present. Um, another thing that could definitely use some improvement would be this gear shift boot. Um, that is a zip tie that's holding up this leather bit to the actual shifter itself. Leather is in good condition, but there is something here just not holding it. Zip tie is obviously not supposed to be the right material. Um, 
you can see there's a little crack in the gear shift right there. And it is, it, it is a bit loose, like it, it pops out of place a little too easily. It's not doing it right now, but sometimes when you're shifting, you'll see in the test drive video, it does pop out. Um, there's the usual like wear and tear, little nicks and scratches in places like the armrest. Um, we did end up completely rewrapping this steering wheel because the original leather was not in great shape, but this is on here very tight, snug, uh, looks good and feels great, it is leather. Other little things, you know, that's broken. Um, and this defroster vent up here is warped, which doesn't look great. But there are no cracks in the dash other than that little thing right there. The leather really is very, very surprising just how nice it is. Uh, this is the passenger seat. There's no signs of cracks or aging, really. The perforation, the little holes are all in place. Nothing is ripped. That's a, that's a bit of dirt there. Ignore that. Um, so this seat really does look very good. Same with the, the driver's seat. You can see the, the, the leather here looks like a little bit more worn from being sat in. But again, no scratches, no rips, no tears. The perforations are good. These are nice front seats. Likewise in the back, both of these seats really, it doesn't look like anybody's honestly ever sat in them. The leather still even feels quite new. Um, again, no scratches, signs of wear. There is, however, in the center console, I think you can see that there's this little stain mark here. We have not been able to get that out. So that is present. The back trunk area is also a really nice place. Uh, overall carpet's clean. You're probably wondering what these, these numbers are. These are just the numbers 928. Uh, the previous owner had those made, I guess for, you know, put, par putting it in front of it, if the car was parked at a show or whatnot. Um, they come with the car, they're just little aluminum cutouts. Under the carpet, um, rust-free, pretty clean. We didn't see any signs of corrosion or anything serious, no red flags, um, but that is, you know, there's that right there. Also this trim piece, you can probably see a little bit of rip there. There is some warping right there that should be level, for example. Uh, same situation on this side. You can't see it when you're on the outside of the car, but from the inside looking out, you do see that warping there. Uh, this side though does not have the same abrasion marks that the other side does. In terms of the electronics, everything in here does work to our knowledge, uh, with the exception of the trip odometer. That has just been set to zero and does not work. However, the uh, actual odometer is functional. All the lights, accessories, uh, windshield wipers, those work. So, we've found everything to be functional. Uh, there is air conditioning, which does blow cold. We've tested that. Sorry, I've got the wrong position here on the windshield wipers. My hand bumped it. Um, oh, the other thing that we had said was this sunroof. It only opens about an inch, if that. The control's down here, and what happens, this is what's happening on the inside. That's it. That's all you're getting is that little crack right there. It does not want to open anymore, but it closes back just fine. From the outside looking in, the uh, sunroof, this is it opening. And that's about all it's going to do but it closes back into place and it's watertight, doesn't leak. So the last thing I'll do is I'll show you a startup video from inside the car here in the showroom. I'll show you the engine starting from uh, an off position and then we'll take it out on the road for a quick test drive. Test driving the Porsche 928. In 
into traffic. All right, well, while we're waiting for this traffic to clear, um, I've got the, uh, the AC running. Uh, it's blowing cold already. It's about, was it 80 degrees or so here in Phoenix today. Uh, AC's already cold, I'm fine. Right, so first impressions of this car is honestly run strong. The motor pulls really, really well. The um, the shifter linkage is it feels a little bit looser than I would expect. Uh, it, it locks into gear fine. Like the throws just seem a little a little long and a little clunky. Um, I think it's probably just the linkage. The transmission itself shifts fine. So all the gauges work, like I mentioned, but you can see that that trip odometer is not moving. So that's the only inoperable uh, component in the gauge cluster. But so right now we're going 50 miles an hour, hands off the wheel. This thing pulls straight. There's no vibration in the wheel really. Uh, even if I'm braking with my hands off right now, it doesn't want to pull. Um, you probably notice if I'm going a little bit to the left, it's just kind of the crowning in the road. So now it's, now it's centered and again, brake. There's no shutter, it doesn't vibrate, we're, it, holds, it holds steady and feels really quite good. Uh, the clutch picks up exactly where you'd expect it to. The downshift is easy. Handles really, really well. I mean, if you're into these cars, you know about the, the transaxle and the 50-50 the weight distribution and all that stuff. And uh, you really do feel it. Compared to like, I, I feel I had a, a Datsun 280ZX and uh, this is light years ahead of that car, but it does kind of have that same very tossable, uh, engaged feel to it. Obviously, this is a lot more sophisticated uh, and really does drive the way you'd expect a, an 80s German, you know, pseudo supercar to, to feel. Look at this, we're at a stoplight and we found I someone had one else. I when I was younger. Yeah. Awesome. I'm done. <laughs> Thanks, John. So there you go. If you had any questions about whether you thought this was cool or it turns heads, it obviously got the attention of that guy. So that's something, right? Okay, so coming on to an on-ramp, I'm gonna give it some gas here. This is a rolling start from second gear. That's 80 miles an hour. This thing goes. So we got up to 80 miles an hour onto this highway. This is not the world's smoothest highway, but it's quiet inside. A little bit of tire noise, wind noise is quite low. The AC climate control is fine. There's no real interior rattles and we're going over uh, maybe some very, very widely spaced, slight, uh, you know, blocks. It's not, a, it's not a paved road. It's like a concrete block road. You can kind of hear that. Uh, really nothing. Nothing feels weird here. Even at this speed, we're doing 70 now. It tracks straight. It feels exactly like you'd expect it to feel. Really a nice driving car. We've, we've written about it a little bit in the, the description of this car. We do have a number of service records. Um, through 2017, 2018, 2019, a substantial amount of either repair work or just preventative maintenance, what maintenance, excuse me, was done to this car. Um, and since we've had it in our possession, we've uh, just, you know, gone over it again and, and done some more work to it. And the details of that I'll leave in the inspection report uh, for you to review later. The one thing, though, that we do want to mention, um, as is common with these cars, you probably know timing belts can be an issue right around this 85, 86,000 mile mark. We don't know whether or not it has been done. The service records we have don't indicate that, and we really have no evidence of knowing. Uh, it could have been done, may not have been. Um, so we just want to disclose that up front. For anybody who does buy this car, uh, our shop can do the full installation for around $900. Uh, so that is an option for anybody who's concerned about the repairs and is interested in the car, we can help out with that. 